Hello. Hello. Ooh, you're far away. All right. See you soon. Almost there. I'm almost at my microphone. <laughs> The old GH. I hate it! Time for Crab! This is episode 214 of Insert Credit, a relentless array of video game topics presented every week to a panel of experts. It's pace dictated by a horrible buzzer. I'm Alex Jaffe, and if I had to name a boat after a video game, I would call it Yar's Revenge. Oh, pretty good. Good question. I'm Frank Spaldi. If I had to name a boat after a video game, I was going to say Vic Viper, but that's not a video game. That's a video game. Ship. Does that count? Uh, no, you have to use the title of a video game. Uh, Blaster Master. Pretty good. Nice. Blaster Master is pretty good. Um, I'm Tim Rogers, and if I had to name a boat after a video game, I would call it Journey to Silius. Mm. Not bad. That's pretty That's, good. That, that was just off the top of my head, was the first, as soon as you said it. I'm sure I could come up with a better one, and I probably will later in this episode of the show. All right, Brandon, it's on you to do another Sunsoft NES game. Bring it on home. <laughs> I don't know that I know uh, a lot of this. Fester's Quest. <laughs> <laughs> Batman the video yeah. game. Adam's family. Um, if I were to name a What's ship, your name? I guess it'd probably be Bullet Witch. Yeah, but what's your name? Oh, my name's Brandon Sheffield. Thank you. And my yacht, my super yacht, is called the Bullet Witch. That's very good. I like it a lot. It's my favorite of the three. So, Brandon. Hey, that's me. You were the winner of last week's episode, which means you had to come up with a question for this one. Yes. Congratulations, I won. So my question is this one. Can you name a time... Or what was the first time, I should say, that a parent of yours, maybe this isn't something that happened to anybody, but that a parent of yours praised a video game unprompted while you were playing it or just like they heard about something and they were like, this seems cool or whatever. I will start. Um, my mother very much liked Myst mm. on the Jaguar CD. Um, she saw me playing Myst on the Jaguar CD and she's like, oh, that looks very interesting. It's very pretty. And she continually, to this day, refers to that game, Myst for the Jaguar CD, as the kind of arbiter of, uh, if only more games were like this, I would mm. be more interested in them. Or are there other games like this out there? Did she ever play it? She never did play it. I don't know. I should get it for her iPad or something. I'm sure it's on there. And then the other one is my stepmother. And this this is going to blow your mind because the I, I'm pretty sure she was doing this just to like be nice to me after we had had an argument or something like that. She popped in while I was playing Power Drive Rally on guess what? The Jaguar, Jaguar City. <laughs> Not Jaguar City, but regular oh. Jaguar. I only like the CD games on Jaguar. That's a and joke. She was like, that looks pretty good. Cute little car on there. I, th I think it's really nice. So um, those are the two times that um, my parents unprompted praised a video game so you y'all got any of those unprompted praised a video game um well uh, as uh, as anyone who's watched uh, any of my uh, reviews on the channel youtube.com slash action button would know if they've gotten more than 10 or 15 minutes into the the show my dad uh, really loved video games <laughs> right up until like the the original nintendo became a thing at which point he couldn't have cared less my dad did bring us uh, wolfenstein and say, you kids are going to love this. Tell your little brother to stay in his room. But uh, I understand that's not exactly the question. So I'm going to I'm going to reinterpret the question in a slightly different way. Yeah, because my dad also likes video games. And so he so I, I guess I mean, if you have a, a parent that didn't like video oh, yeah. games. What well, well, well here's here's my answer, which I think you will find quite uh, sufficient. After Doom, as I say in my review of Doom, after my dad brought us the shareware disc of Doom, and we played it and had a good time. He just wasn't interested anymore in games. It kind of seemed like he, he wasn't interested in the Nintendo uh, when the Nintendo came out. But then shareware games on PC, he was a bit of a fan of. But then Doom just kind of broke his brain. Like he, he liked it when you were shooting Nazis. He didn't understand when you were shooting demons. And then he fell out of video games for a long time. But then one Christmas, my dad asked me, have you heard of this game, Assassin's Creed 3? Interesting. He's like, I saw this on TV. Three. 
Yeah, it was three. It was Assassin's Creed three. It was advertised, I believe. <laughs> okay, advertised. I was I was imagining like a local uh, news story. <laughs> it was <laughs> new it game was, for the kids. Assassin's Creed three. It was advertised apparently well enough that my dad was like, I I'd probably play that. He was like, he's like, have you heard of this game? Is are these games good? And then he's like, "There's is there Assassin's Creed One? Is there Assassin's Creed Two? Like, are these games good?" And I'm like, "Ah, oh, man, uh, I I hadn't actually really played too many of them in too much detail at that time." And then a few Christmases hence, he was asking about Assassin's Creed Four, right? He was like, "This is Assassin's Creed Four. Have you seen this game?" He's like, "You play a lot of those video games, right? Have you played this Assassin's Creed Four? So he asked about Assassin's Creed Three and Assassin's Creed Four, and he said, "But on both occasions, I'd probably play that game." And I'm like, "Man, my dad probably would." enjoy the assassin's creed games it's got all the stupid stuff he likes they've got the pacing of a i don't know of like a network tv drama in there hbo for kids i call it and then the gameplay i think he would like those new assassin's creeds if he had a, a console he'd probably play that viking one it'd be hard to figure out the... i mean I'm, I'm watching the commercial right now for assassin's creed 3 and oh yeah how does it look it's i mean it looks great it's mostly cutscenes, but it's just like look colonial dudes <laughs> you know there's a theme yeah. here that a normal human could relate to, you know, and I, yeah. I think that's probably the difference is that he's, he he could be like, oh, I know I have a frame of reference for this. It's much like the Wolfenstein versus Doom thing, right? Like, yeah, he enjoyed shooting the Nazis. He didn't really get the the demon thing. Yeah, he was a it was a diehard Roman Catholic who uh, I think I theorize he might not have thought it was funny to be shooting demons. Mm. Uh, he might not have thought that Satan was like a funny theme, but his dad had killed Nazis. So, I mean, well, no, actually his dad is not. I don't think his dad actually killed any Nazis. My mom was into games uh, in the Nintendo era. Um, she hung up the controller kind of forever after beating Mario 3. Mm. Um, but, you know, past that, I don't, she didn't really look at games, but the, the one time I, rem I remember her like kind of doing a double take and then sitting down and watching while I still lived at home was uh Shenmue. Oh, Ooh. you know, wow. I, I think just compelled by the idea of there being a game where you're just kind of a guy in a place doing normal things. And there's a story was, you know, very new to her and to most people, I guess. And that rules. A good yeah. One. I think your mom wins for best taste. Jeff, we didn't get to do yours. You had one. Yeah, I had some, but we're out of time. And I interrupted because I figured the panelists should go before the host. <laughs> no, you were right. You were right to interrupt me. Absolutely. That was within Just your give us, give us the parent and the game. Okay. Um, my parents really liked the music of Super Mario Land 2 for the Game Boy and would sing along oh. with it when I played it in the car. Excellent. Excellent example. I love it. All right. Can we pause for a second? I'm going to see if I can do something about this dog. Okay. Mark at him. Give it a hug. Okay, g give me just like 30 seconds. Um, while we're paused, uh, my dad really liked Ocarina of Time while I was playing it. And he was uh, really into watching me play that game as I went through it. And uh, we had this kind of ritual as I was growing up when anytime he would see me playing a game, he would say, hey, is that better than Ocarina of Time? And I'd say, no, dad, no game is better than Ocarina of Time. Dark He'd Souls say, is now, though. I I'm not going to tell my dad that. Don't tell him that. Yeah. Dark Souls has all but replaced Ocarina of Time now as the go-to best game of all time. I'm playing through Dark Souls right now. I like it. Okay, I'm back. I did the numbers on this. I, I actually recently very much actually did do the numbers on it. Brandon, did you know that Dark Souls is uh, now pretty much across the board as far as the mainstream tastes are concerned, the greatest game of all time? Uh, I'm, I'm getting the sense of it. It has surmounted Ocarina of Time. Many, many tools I used to determine this. Uh, involving looking at all of like the, the most recent top 100 lists that have been posted on YouTube or uh, various I'm websites. I'm not going to believe it until it wins the Game Facts poll. Yeah. 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 Well, that's that's the one I'm waiting on too. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, like I've, I've been looking for that. Assume I were playing Dark Souls right this minute. What should I name our character? Jimberly. Ingui. Like Malmsteen. I just named a horse in Red Dead Redemption 2 Tummy. So I kind of like that. Tummy? I'm into Tummy. tummy. Oh, you're playing Red Dead Redemption 2? I am. <laughs> yeah, you got that you got that, that ray tracing. Oh god, yes. Well, it's not really ray tracing. It's not ray tracing. The yeah. DLSS, yeah, yeah, yeah. That DLSS is a mind blower, dude. I went from my from the no, the pre-DLSS patch to the DL like I captured a bunch of footage with uh before they released the DLSS, and then I god darn play I I you know, I, I ended up playing it again with the DLSS on, and it's just like night and day. 
it's a better looking game from five years ago than to me anyway than you know death stranding or cyberpunk well, it's, only, it's or whatever. only three years ago but uh but yeah it's uh they have so many so much manpower over there so much person power that they're able to kind of push past uh the concept of time and kind of make a 2021 game in yeah they, they made a 2023 game in 2018 basically uh by just by virtue of how many people they have working on it not to derail this about our dr2 or anything but uh, let's get back to the old yeah, oh yeah my <laughs> second question was is dark souls the new ocarina of time is it that was? true uh absolutely it's <laughs> on my sheet oh weird uh so dark souls has replaced uh uh i have done the numbers on this recently uh brandon as i was telling you and it seems as though dark souls has replaced zelda ocarina of time as the the typical uh dude gamer and also mainstream media outlet writer and also just a uh average youtubers go-to game for best game of all time is now dark souls not ocarina of time anymore i think ocarina of time has finally been dethroned it makes me feel good that um it's not a nintendo game that i disliked it early so that people can't accuse me of disliking it because it's popular i disliked it before the it paper popular. trails there what if i told you brandon sheffield that i made a three-hour video just for you yeah. that explains how to like souls games and it is uh it is live on youtube right now <laughs> what if i told well, you that it is a complete secret and uh only uh only like 16 people have found it at this point i do believe that it is possible for me to like it and i do understand why people like it but i don't no sorry i do understand why people like it but i don't believe it's possible for me to like it interesting i'll tell you i could take a look at some of that video i guess okay i've named our demon souls character pipitha by the way so i think that's okay. actually good uh, uh, how many p's uh two well there's three p's p-i-p-p-i-t-h-a that's what i was curious Pipitha. about yeah so she's she has green skin and purple the souls hair. takeover thing take it, it uh, I, I think it's just the game aging out that game's real old now yeah yeah ocarina is an old butt game did you see that there's recently been a uh a decompilation yeah yeah you see that there's gonna be yeah, a PC baby. port soon i'm gonna I'm a huge moron. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to download it and <laughs> run it for 20 minutes, just like I did for 60, Mario 64. A couple of buddies of mine were joking about doing that, downloading it and playing it for 20 minutes, just like they did with Mario 64. And then uh, both of the buddies eventually admitted to one another, not calling them out here uh, by name. Both of the buddies eventually admitted to one another that, yeah, they got all 120 stars in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I actually <laughs> did bounce. I just, I think we discussed this in a recent episode. I just don't, I can't get into Mario 64. I can get into uh, Zelda though. So might actually play that when it happens. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm probably going to, so, I haven't heard about if it. They would just put in some sort of right analog stick or mouse look in there. Oh, they uh, can. They got full yeah, source control, they, baby. Yeah. Uh, so what, what you're not, what you haven't heard, Brandon, is that uh, a decompilation project finally put out its uh, initial release. Uh, so yes. someone has decompiled the entirety of the game with uh, extremely commented source code. Mm -hmm. uh, so people can now, as they did with Mario 64. Port and mod, yeah. Yes, exactly. They, they have full control over, over the game at this and, point. And so I actually, I, I saw this news shortly after I had already uh, recorded a little thing, a little secret bonus thing for uh, patreon.com slash action button. Yeah, oh, there's a little secret bonus thing about how uh, Dark Souls had replaced Ocarina of Time. Uh, I then saw the news that Ocarina of Time has been, uh, is on a, it's on its way back. So you don't count Ocarina out. Yeah, hefty competition now. Yeah, yeah. don't count it out just yet. But uh, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. I'm an old person. I was born in the year 1979. Um, I initially played Demon's Souls in 2009 and sort of liked it, uh, though was a little bit upset when a buddy revealed how thoroughly he had Swiss cheesed it full of holes. And then I kind of, uh, I, I beat through it one time, starting with the royalty class, because uh, you get free magic. And I then just kind of r didn't really love the series after that, to a point where I might have, uh, I, 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 I sort of didn't really like Dark Souls. I now recognize, at the very least, without saying what I think of Zelda or Green of Time, I now recognize that not only is Dark Souls a great video game, it is definitely, definitely more interesting and more significant historically, more fun to play uh, uh, overall than Zelda Ocarina of Time ever was. Yeah, no one ever called anything the Ocarina of Time of anything. That's true. Exactly. Exactly. There you go. You have it. You get, get give yourself a point there. I will. You got a Jaffe point. You got a Jaffe point. Love Jaffe points. So what, you're playing Dark Souls? What are you playing Dark Souls on, Jaffe? PC. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, well, soon would you Personal like to be computer. playing it on a PC with a 3080? I would love to. 
<laughs> you can only run it at like 4K 120 though on this thing. So it's it'll be a significant upgrade. Do you want to know a secret? That was not actually my question too. I just I, I figured yeah. it wasn't. Here's question three though. Excluding anyone on this show or anyone you employ, if you could clone one person a hundred times to make an entire game development team, who would it be? Toby Fox. There would not be anyone on the show or that I employ. I'll tell you that. No, uh, Frank, I did not have you in mind when I asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I employ some people that I would clone a hundred times. A hundred Toby Foxes would make the best uh, Assassin's Creed game of all time. That's probably true. Uh, I mean, you you obviously need someone who's an all rounder, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's I mean, a, that's a really good answer out of the gate, Tim. You you can't say a hundred Shigesato Itoi's, for example. No, love that guy. Not. Brilliant guy. Popularized the use of uh, reusable grocery bags in Japan in the 1990s, which probably directly led to their adoption elsewhere in the world. You know, beautiful guy, beautiful man, right? But uh, he's not, and he's you know responsible largely for uh, three of the best video games of all time, I'd say. But you got Toby Fox has got it all. The guy's got it all. Most of the all rounders are, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm struggling to think of, but it's like Jeff Minter. And it's like, I don't, the world doesn't want a big Jeff Minter game. <laughs> yeah, no. like a game made by a hundred Minters. <laughs> yeah. Open world llama experience. <laughs> Minter, I hardly know her. I now see the thing is, uh, Toby Fox, I don't know how good his 3D art is, but I know his music is so good that if you can learn how to do that, I'm not going to say it carries over 100%, but come on. No, a group of foxes is called a skulk. Brandon, I know you haven't played Undertale, right? No, I played through about half of it. Oh, okay, okay. I did it. So how about that music, though, right? Can't disagree about that music. I can't. Lord. I mean, I think the whole game is good. I, it's, just because I don't have anything much to say about it doesn't mean I don't like it. I think it's good. I mean, I'll admit, I don't have too much to say about it either, which is uh, tells you how good it is, I think. I mean, I'm a little uh, little jealous of it, actually. His, oh, yeah, of course. He made that, he made that game, and, and now he can just kind of do whatever he wants. Not only did he make that game mostly by himself. I mean, I know he had lots of help with, like, pixel art, and uh, he had buddies and a fan community, and... and uh, uh, he was, you know, in, deeply entrenched in a community of music composers, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I don't, but I mean, largely he's, he's the creative force behind that game. Mm -hmm. Not only did he make it largely by himself, God darn guy, uh, kind of learned as he went too. So mm -hmm. kind of just tells you, <laughs> just, uh, it kind of just tells you, oh, what could I have learned as I went? So the, the jealousy is, is definitely palpable with a game like that. Yeah, Definitely. I palpate it. I first experienced that twinge of jealousy when I was playing Groove Coaster. Uh, in the arcade, a Groove Coaster being an excellent Taito rhythm game. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was playing it, and I was saying, wow, this game's real good. I like how they did all this stuff. And then I was looking at what next song to play, and I was like... <laughs> the Undertale's in there. It was actually like a Toby Fox remix of a Taito song. Yeah, yeah. He's got wow. songs in a, in a lot of He's stuff. He's got songs it, but in it's Super like, Smash Brothers. When it's like a Toby Fox remix of a Taito song, that tells me they're like, please, Toby Fox remix a song <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah because him. they wouldn't let nobody touch their stuff uh otherwise like yeah. i mean yeah they're, they're pretty iron-fisted about their stuff so that was where the jealousy was like all right fine you did a great job me and you are two <laughs> white guys who learned japanese went exactly. to japan met a whole bunch of japanese game developers right. there's a guy who god darn obliterated us who, who musashied our kojiro <laughs> basically yeah right like just completely obliterated every single aspect of yeah. my personal dreams yeah everything i was trying to do <laughs> right <laughs> like a hundred percent oh you got salieried i've yeah. been told in my videos that i come across as uh as arrogant and uh, uh self-aggrandizing i really would hope people have learned to recognize the 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 simultaneous uh, just codependency of self-aggrandizement and self-deprecation uh, and also actual jealousy for people who've actually done stuff, I would hope at this point. So I've just made it, I've laid it clear for you, my enemies listening. Uh, <laughs> of course I feel bad. And of course I feel like a fraud who's been defeated by this dude, right? I got another candidate right <laughs> under the wire here. I, I always wanted to you learn did. how to make music. <laughs> uh jay tholen now jay i don't believe is a, a programmer or much of one maybe but oh i know that guy he he makes a ton of content yeah, so for, for on sure. hypnospace outlaw right there's a ton of content in that game it's, and he does the music he does all the websites and stuff like that so a hundred of him you know kind of going hog wild on on a on, a, on an engine that's kind of built for them and just going you know content heavy i'd like to see that 
HW. I have one more, which is uh, that um, Joachim Sandberg. Oh, yeah. Cognac. Made some mm. beautiful games. Uh, made some good stuff. And I think uh, w- one of his biggest issues is is that he's isolated and by himself. So if he had a hundred of him, he'd probably um, really be able to gain some extra outside perspective of himself. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I don't think that went where you thought it was going to go. I enjoyed a delicious Balti with him in, uh, in, uh, in England, a uh, delicious Balti. He's a cool guy. He's a cool uh, guy. I, I like that he, guy. He's, he's, he's good. A hundred of him, you'd definitely get something good. Mm-hmm. He's about as Swedish as you can get before you're uh, on the way toward being uh, something else entirely. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what that means. Cool guy. I hope he's listening. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> Shout me out in the comments. If you're listening. I know there's no comments on a podcast. Um, there kind of are. Here's our next question. The day we're recording this, we just learned of the passing of Masayuki Uemura, creator of the mm-hmm. Famicom and Super Famicom and founder of the Ritsumeikan Center for Game Studies. Uh, what can you tell us about him? So what I would say about him is that, you know, it, it is... Of course, sad when anyone passes that that has touched your life. But um, my feeling today is just being very thankful that this guy actually got out and talked, you know, like that just doesn't happen with uh, people who were that embedded inside of Nintendo, especially Nintendo Japan. Um, so the fact that this guy went out and did lectures, uh, you know, he, he traveled to the U.S. sometimes to talk about the work that he did. I'm very thankful to him for just being that open and and uh, and and recognizing his place in video game history and sharing it. I feel that way about Ralph Bear as well. Mm-hmm. Cuz he, you know, he before he died, he's just like I'm going to put everything in a book. You know, I don't think Ralph was a, a necessarily like a self-centered person. I think he understood that there's some level of responsibility mm-hmm. um as the creator of the video game arguably. Yeah, I mean, he knew he was part of history. He wasn't yeah. uh People kept telling him, so it's not like yeah. <laughs> couldn't avoid it. So yeah, uh, that's that's what I would say about him. Yeah, I mean, he uh, helped create the the modern light gun. I mean, that's a very small part of his legacy, but um, he and y- Yokoi, I guess, put that together. The zapper. Play your your time crisis. Play your House of the Dead. Without without him, we wouldn't have someone saying suffer like G did, which is very important um, to my life. I mean, he, he, that was his line. He, he read that one. Yeah, he, he read that one. That's why he was so confused. <laughs> Without um, light guns, we wouldn't have a light gun games largely being the most, uh, the most popular games to play with a date at a game center in Japan. That's right. Uh, the stereotypical girl who doesn't like video games, uh, oft heard of in, uh, in, in lore and folklore who may not exist apparently would uh, would mostly just like playing the light gun games i don't know guy brought video games to a larger group of people it's true uh, it's beautiful that famicom sure did uh save save the video game industry i mean you could argue maybe something else would have but uh i don't think so i don't it know certainly happened i mean okay maybe maybe it would have uh, the, the thing about his engineering on the famicom though is that it's a little bit of a miracle of engineering in 1983 on a severe budget um yeah, you know, I I think I would mostly uh, credit uh, Gunpei Yokoi for Nintendo's sort of philosophy of uh, I don't remember the nice way that he phrased it, but of using cheap crap and recycling yeah. it and, and to make something new. Um, but I think the Famicom demonstrated that beautifully, and and the the miracle of of bringing that thing in under cost and and playing Donkey Kong, which was a contemporary arcade game in '83, was uh, frankly miraculous yeah it's true good job that guy without the nintendo uh like me and my brother would not have cared about video games probably at all pretty much ever because we had gotten so bored of the atari and i think i agree that something would have come eventually but the fact that this was so cheap to manufacture i think is what pushed things forward yeah and also the um the architecture point and also well i mean this he didn't have to do anything to do with the quality control but the architecture point is definitely like there was a different direction than Atari was going. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Like they built a console designed to play one thing, and then people hacked around it to make it play other things. And the Famicom was created to be like I don't know. It was even though the the twenty six hundred and Intellivision already existed, it was created around the idea of you will put cartridges that have new games in them in the thing, and uh, it it was somewhat revolutionary to create the architecture to support. Oh, and it, and it, and it supported, you know, 
the thing I think a lot of people don't realize about the NES is that most NES games that you love are not running stock NES. There's hardware in the cartridge. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he built, I don't even know if he had this in mind, but the fact that it is sort of an infinitely expandable console, it, it, it kept it alive way longer than it should have. And I've, I've talked about this before, maybe not on the show, but the Famicom hardware in particular, if you go beyond things that sort of have that official canonical Nintendo stamp, not a year went by since 83 that commercial software has not been written for this architecture. Oh, and that's yeah. n nothing else can claim that. Yeah, true. And I'm talking about like, you know, the clones in the mid 90s. And then that sort of gave way to the plug and play systems that started in the early 2000s. And then that the, the homebrew scene starts around 2005. And now you have really, really easy tools with stuff like NES Maker. So these games are just being pumped out. I'm not I'm not necessarily saying that, like, it's a remarkable contribution to the humanities that there's new NES games or whatever. But but I am saying that, you know, the architecture he built obviously is beloved and that it, it, it has sustained for all this time somehow. It is still remarkable. You can remark upon it. Which we just did for six minutes. Uh, here's my next question. Is Halo cool? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do, what do us 40-year-olds uh, know about that? Uh, about what oh, is cool? Man. No, I, hey, I, I ain't I 40 we, yet, buddy. I think we know some stuff. Yeah, and my job there. is telling people what's cool, okay? <laughs> I, I know what's cool. I do think Halo is cool, and here's why I would say that. I would say that Halo is cool because it is a shooting game. It's a first person shooter that feels unique, doesn't feel like other games. It is not gritty and grim, dark and blood guts stuff, which I think is like they were all rated T up until recently. They're rated right. M. Yeah. The no profanity in the first Halo. No profanity. Uh, and they're colorful and beautiful to look at. They, they, it's got remarkable vistas like it almost is like if if Sega and Microsoft had a collaboration, that's that's what it would be like. Microsoft would be responsible for the the spreadsheetiness of the uh, the back end, and then Sega would be responsible for for the the skyboxes and the and the game feel. Is sort of how I think about Halo. So yeah, I think Halo is cool. I look forward to playing the new one if I can ever afford not afford if I can ever find a console to buy it for. Um, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. It's been a year. Still can't buy. Still can't yeah. buy an Xbox. You could just uh, instead of getting an Xbox, you could just spend uh, like three thousand dollars to get a thirty eighty from a scalper and then build a <laughs> yeah. PC. <laughs> yeah, I could do you that. Could just do that. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Because uh, I got that <laughs> infinite running on this PC, baby. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Now I don't know if Halo is cool though, because did you see Fortnite added Dwayne the Rock Johnson so he can like dance with like afro unicorns and uh uh banana guys now yeah i predicted yeah, that's that. definitely a lot cooler yeah so he can do guys. like like uh fresh prince of bel-air referencing dances alongside uh unicorns with like rainbow hair and uh so that's cool yeah that's what's cool yeah and i mean the halo's trying to be the new Fortnite. pathetic as i saw someone <laughs> say on twitter uh this is for gamers uh or it's not for gamers or like whatever it's like some sort of uh, Microsoft does not understand the modern gamer. Somebody said that on a on a comment on Twitter. I like that grappling hook. I feel like I'm gonna have a hard time doing cool stuff with it, but I probably will. I'll probably take to it pretty quick. It looks like it requires a lot of precision to do all the cool things that I'm seeing people do with it, but I don't know. I could probably figure it out. It looks a little too frictionless, or it, or not looks. It is a little too frictionless for me. It's a little too. Uh, it's it's not as it's not as exciting as I kind of assumed it would be. It's just a grappling hook, and there's this, uh, much like the guy who shows up into any conversation about video game music to be like, the moon and DuckTales, dude. There's, there's a, there is a guy who shows up to say, any game with a grappling hook is goatee material, or whatever, like, in a comment thread about Halo. I saw somebody making fun of the, the grappling hook in the new Halo, not making fun of it, but uh, just thoughtfully breaking it down. Need not name this person, though I could if I wanted to. I'm just breaking down the grappling hook as being uh, sort of too uh, too rewardy and not risky, and also just kind of lock and key. And uh, I agree with a lot of that stuff, though. I, the guy was getting ripped apart. You can grapple some, to somebody that's in a vehicle, mm -hmm. and then and then you kick them out of the vehicle. But if that vehicle is ex is about to explode 
as you kick that person out of the vehicle, you have to sit there while it explodes. So there's there's a little risk. I think that's kind of funny. I guess uh, the concerns I saw voiced were largely uh, centered around the campaign. So oh. maybe that's not campaign. Maybe in the multiplayer, there's a little more. Uh... I was talking about the multiplayer. There's probably some more risk there. I don't know. Campaign, like, I don't care if there's risk. I just want to play through it and have a good time. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Whatever, dude. No, I don't know if it's necessarily a question of risk. It's uh, I guess we've thoroughly a- agreed then that Halo is just not cool because we're having <laughs> uh, probably the most boring conversation possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Halo, <laughs> Halo's Halo's neat. It's technological. Uh, it's 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 got some wizardry in it. I just fired a magic spell at a guy who had already killed himself by hitting a a, a flaming barrel. By the way, just letting everyone. Know oh, that. are you playing Demon Souls playing literally Demon Souls. while we're recording? Yeah, I'm this? playing Demon Souls, and right. you can see the footage if you uh, are backing patreon.com slash insert credit you will be able to see this footage nice. just letting everybody that's know that. very nice nice it's all uploaded that's that to bonus the content we were teasing last episode yeah, i mean so it's, uh, maybe maybe it's not even all of it uh who knows i don't know if this footage is going to be very exciting i'm just stomping through one one as a oh, royal it doesn't matter see, let's see if i can beat the boss uh, i should yeah. just be playing halo during this that would have been more uh our listeners vote. could dark side of the moon this and sync your footage to this very show. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's what I'm going to do. I mean, it, it's, it'll take like three seconds. Ah. For me. And everybody already links their, uh, their, their, their audio files in the chat. I was just going to steal them all. Well, let's and, all uh, take three seconds for a quick break, after which we'll be right back for five more questions in a lightning round. All right. Yeah. not able to reach my landlord i left a message oh i think that's what they're for i think their landlords <laughs> they're are just to uh, not be reached landlords are just voicemail boxes made of meat yeah. that's all they are <laughs> I, I think i saw that cronenberg film yeah <laughs> yeah welcome back to insert credit we've got a question from nick who is one of the many subscribers to patreon.com slash insert credit where you can get access for a nominal fee to a form which allows you to submit questions to this show and uh, get some interesting bonus content like uh, extra episodes and other neat features that are coming down the pipeline for you. Uh, Nick asks, what are your favorite or the best times that a game has broken its own rules? Ooh. Hmm. That requires some percolating. Yeah, I'm percolating on it right now as I play Demon's Souls, <laughs> which is a game that uh, is, uh, is... The Souls games are largely believed to have strict rules, though, like, right there from... I'm actually playing Demon's Souls as a royal uh, who uh, is, is, like, the privileged class who who grew up in a, in a castle or a palace and has uh, one magic... Has already had the best tutors... And thus begins the game with one magic spell and a fancy silver wand and a ring that enables uh, MP recharge. All stuff that otherwise getting in the game for any other class is uh, somewhat uh, laborious. So the whole idea of a Souls game, uh, a Souls game requiring you to be super attentive, uh, it, it just kind of lets you just completely break that just by choosing this uh, a slightly different class on the opening menu. The classes which it doesn't seem like they have any kind of a uh, but I mean, that's not really breaking a rule. That's uh, that's just it's, it's uh, breaking a convention, I guess. But it, it is within the game's rules, so it's it's breaking sort of what the player might think or misconceive the rules of the game to be. Are are rich people in general breaking the rules of society? I guess that's the question. <laughs> are they breaking them or are they dictating them? Are they embodying them? I guess is another question. Like this that. guy's got a spear. He just completely died because I blasted him with the magic spell that I shouldn't even have. <laughs> so breaking the rules of... Uh... Thank you. So I, I, I don't have anything, but I do have a, a thought that might prompt something from someone else. It hasn't for me, but uh, maybe a game that acknowledges its own glitches and you can exploit them. Yeah, I was trying to think about that. Th- this is a tough question because I, th- I think we have to take rules as conventions because like, what is a rule in a video game other than something that you can do? Yeah, or uh, I mean, rules uh, in design. Uh, strictly speaking, a rule yeah. is uh, like one of the restrictions that keeps you from doing whatever you want. Uh, yeah. it, a rule in game design tends to just res- mean it a uh, restriction, 
right? Okay, I, I, I do have one, and, and it's going to be a little bit of a stereotype one for me. I thought of something from The Secret of Monkey Island yeah, that I like. Nice. Oh, big monkeys. Which is that, as a rule, in the dialogue trees, when you hover over a sentence and click it, that is the exact sentence that Guybrush will say. During the second act of the game, you're on a ship, you have a crew, they are not, uh, they are, are not following your orders at all. Um, and as you're trying to get them to do that, uh, one of them asks you, do you know what keel hall means? And um, one of your options is like a full dictionary uh, uh, definition of, of keel hall, um, including its pronunciation. And when you click that, he just says something like, got it. <laughs> um, <laughs> as in like, I understand, I don't want that. Um, so, so that is a rule break played for comedic effect. I just so thought I think that's kind of a good one. In the okay. original Dragon Quest, when you're fighting the uh, boss at the very end, the Dragon Lord, you're uh, the whole game. You've uh, been playing through this uh, turn-based combat, but if you linger too long at that last boss, he'll just get impatient and attack you. Okay, that's a good one. It's a good mm-hmm. one. There's got to be some JRPGs that uh, add things to your uh, options that that shouldn't be there. I would think in special cases, like, I don't know, does a mother game do that at some point? I mean, it's got to. I think I'm struggling with it because those don't feel like they break the rules because they they just redefine what the rules are. But I guess it's it's more like defying your expectation, in, in which case it's like that uh, I want to be the guy kind of Maso Court thing where it's like I mm. the, these first two platforms fell down. Surely the third one must also. And then it. Floats up See, and I just, I just feel like that's dirty game design. I don't feel like that's yeah. ever pleasant at all. And I don't feel like that's breaking the rules in that, you know, in that game, it's it, the, the rule is expect the unexpected in that game. Yeah. Unexpected. Expecting the unexpected is just one of the worst uh, frames of mind. I'm just struggling too. with what, what isn't, what, what are the rules and what's breaking the rules then? Because like, well, I think you're overthinking it, man. I don't know. Like, like sometimes in DuckTales, you can walk through walls. That's breaking the rules. I like games where the only rule is there are no rules, personally. <laughs> yeah, like, well, Fight Club, like what? dude. In Fight, that's the first rule of Fight Club is there are no rules, oh, remember? Yeah. Fight, Fight Club on the original Xbox, yeah. <laughs> or maybe that was 360. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't like when, uh, when, like, for example, I was playing this Mega Man 11 game and I got told by many people in the Twitch chat that I was nitpicking, which is a funny phrase to apply when, uh, when you're criticizing a game for having, like, two two enemies that look exactly the same but are moving at a different speed i'm like see that's just dirty game design it's just game design one-on-one don't have two enemies that look exactly the same but are moving at different speed that's like having a, a goomba that looks exactly like a goomba that you have to stomp twice and people in the chat were like you're, you're just too nitpicky you just need to get good bro it's like, like no. one of them the green turtles turns around all of a sudden right yeah, yeah. i don't want to get good at something that sucks it objectively sucks if you're going to have this uh, enemies looking identical but moving differently, come on. Uh, for this next question, I'm going to give you what a is choice happening here. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. It's getting frustrated. Uh, at Mega Man 11 or at Demon Souls? Demon Souls broke its own rule. Mm. That's a joke. It didn't continue. All right. I'm going to give you a choice here. Do you want to talk about Jeff Keeley's Game Awards, or do you want to come up with some new slimes for the next Dragon Quest? <laughs> I mean, what's the difference uh, at this point? Am I right? LMAO. Nice. Uh, Doom shotgun. Sound I don't effect. know very much about the slimes. Yeah. And I, I feel like I can have opinions on the game awards pretty easily. I got some easy opinions about the game awards is that uh, the game, the game of the year nominees. First of all, I'm watching it tonight live in my house and I'm not streaming it. Uh, despite what everyone is asking me, or am I going to stream my reactions to the game awards? No. What kind of psycho would do that? I mean, I know I did it last year, but I'm not doing it. And uh, despite all the trouble that's going on and the discussion of that among my peers right now, we're announcing a game in the pre-show of the, the official Awards. pre-show. Well, I mean, it is part of the official pre-show, but it's like it won't be Game Awards branded. They have like a whole day of dumb event stuff. Oh, and so it's so, during the part where the Twitch chat is like just palpably angry and waiting for Smash character reveals or whatever. That's right. And so oh, apparently okay. we will not be looking at the Twitch chat during that time. <laughs> I would advise just never looking at it ever. Unless any Twitch you're chat. watching a stream on twitch.tv slash action button. Tomorrow, uh, you've probably already seen it at this point, playing Final Fantasy XIV for the first time. Yeah, tomorrow is several days ago. That's what I, that's what I said. You've already seen it. You've already, if you're listening to this, you've already seen it. 
So the Game Awards, they're silly, but I don't mind them as much as some other people do because I watch them is, every year, man. I, it is I, whatever. Just the dumb spectacle, and we don't really have, we barely have E3 anymore. So you got to have something where all the AAA stuff is like, here's what we got. So it is just like a big bunch of advertisements. I wish it kind of weren't an award show. They I should guess. call it the game commercials. Yeah, just <laughs> the game. Here they are. The game. Yes. Have Yay. Some, have some have some trailers. Talk about. Are we going to see stuff. another Final Fantasy 16 trailer tonight? Brandon Sheffield sound off. What do you think? I think so. I think okay, so. That's good. That's all I want. I just want that Final Fantasy. If if the world knew what was good for it, there would be a Final Fantasy, or there would be a Dragon Quest Twelve trailer tonight. Man, they're better. Uh, in the, addition I, to a Final Fantasy, I really 16 hope trailer. with that Final Fantasy sixteen that they make it just. I know they're not going to do it. They're going to lean into the serious, grim, dark nonsense story of. 15 no, I don't know. It's the, the goofy. It's time. the guys behind Final Fantasy fourteen, which embraces goofiness. Okay, good, good. They they better get that yeah. goofiness for me. They just let cat boys wear maid outfits in that game. That's fair enough. I mean, you play pretty much any any you know big boy big butt budget uh j game these days it's uh it's 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 gonna have more fun to it than the average uh similarly aesthetic uh western game would better. imo like if cyberpunk 2077 had been a j game it would have probably been hilarious the game awards I, I think what bothers me is that it it feels very stuck in a past narrative of what people who play video games are yeah it just it still feels like the same 90s stuff oh yeah or maybe maybe early 2000s i don't know not quite 90s but it, it's just 90 90s. it's 90s as heck yeah. let's just call it the 90s jerry sure um it, it's the spirit of the 90s with the aesthetics of the early 2000s yeah i feel like it only exists because um capital g gamers just want to feel like they're part of some i don't know minority and it's like oh my god there's a there's a show that is finally for us you know, and, and and I, I I think games are way more interesting than that now. I think you go to Target and there's like thirty retro video game shirts. You know, like the, the, oh, the yeah. stuff is everywhere. And the the fact that this is our like mainstream award show is kind of weird and gross to me. Um, so I will probably not be watching it because uh, every time I do, I just get really annoyed but mostly for like impatient reasons. Cause it's just like, Oh my God, just do something other than these commercials. I feel pretty uh, differently about it, I guess, because I, I don't see it as being for Be gamers. Because to you're feel profiting like materially off of it. Is that why? Yeah. Well, yeah. no, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for disclosing. The, uh, <laughs> it's going to be in the, in the pre-show part where nobody's watching, but um, that's, that's materially profiting from it. The ads for the new game reveals are the point to me because then i can get a snapshot of what triple a is doing and that's valuable to me um yeah. i don't have to it's all in one spot and a after a few hours i know what those people are doing for the next couple of years you know and and i i think that's useful oh certainly i don't really think that it's the gamers being like finally something for us anymore i i, I feel like that is kind of I, I don't feel the audience does that i feel that keely does that yeah, that's part of it. Well, I also feel like that has just morphed with something else, like slightly more sinister, which I can't really define just yet. But anyway, watching it gives me valuable context that is kind of required for my job. Also, I love seeing whenever there's like an indie game revealed because uh, uh, it's just really fun to know that I'm making something, still making something better than everyone else <laughs> is kind of neat. It's that's like genuinely fun and thrilling for me. Um, and that the world is, it's like, will the world still have their mind blown by Action Button Entertainment's next game? Answer turns out to be yes every year. So I'm starting to just think, I can go on just not making any games and, uh, uh, you know, probably probably do just fine. That's what the Game Awards tells me. But also, can I just say real quick? Sure. I think uh, the god darn Game of the Year category is just kind of, it's a bit of a wheel spin, man. Like... All the games are just, I mean, I hate to use the word derivative as a person who previously tried to make music. It's just every single game is just a genre piece, you know, and not like Resident Evil 8, you know, sure, delightful, though. Is it good outside of anything related to it's being a video game? I don't know. Metroid Dread, whatever. Metroid's cool. Uh, a Metroid game is still better than a lot of games, though. I, I, I've only got so many years left in my life now. And I can't be super missling a door open 90% of the way through too many more video games in my life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Opening the menu and putting a super missile on 
like 90 percent of the way through the game well or not well, you don't have to open a menu I mean, maybe that's what makes it even worse it's maybe it's even worse that you don't have to open a menu i can't be changing my gun just to open a door 90 percent of the way through with a gun i got eight hours ago just to prove i still have it because the game won't even let me sell it i don't know i'm just saying i think i look at the games that are nominated for awards and i'm like okay cheap tricks and old names that's what it is we'll be doing our own 2021 game of the year episode like maybe in late january or early february so yeah something yeah. like that game of the year shouldn't be awarded until oscar time do it at oscar yeah. time okay that's a good time to pin it let's normalize oscar time as the we'll pin uh, it to awards season oscar time yes it's it's oscar time jerry are there really any video games that you couldn't make today no wait what do you mean <laughs> what i, do I you think mean? there's probably socially problematic ones but i'd have to think hard yeah you mean like th things that we're incapable of making at this time? The question is left intentionally open. Yeah. I mean, you can make some version of anything at this point. Well, there's so many markets now. It's not a video game market, you know? So I'm tempted to be like, I don't know, the like crappy NES games, like like Jekyll and Hyde or whatever. But it's like, no, there's a market for that now. Yeah, so. you can make this. You release a pixel art RPG, 10,000 sales guaranteed, right? You see this? Like any <laughs> pixel so. art RPG. Well, I think it's more like a thousand, but still, it's it's not ten anymore. I, I, don't I think remember so. for a while it was ten. Oh God! If anything was guaranteed ten, we'd 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 be in business. Yeah. I don't know if you can do like a Custer's Revenge anymore. Like that. That's a, that, like I can only go to, to like socially problematic. Yeah, I'm, but also you can make those. Oh, that is true. Just, yeah. Uh, not only can you make those, Frank. I hate to say this, you're guaranteed a little bit more than a thousand sales. Yeah. Yeah, and they're probably they're on Steam already from self-branded contrarians who who uh, just love yeah. to prove that uh, people who talk a lot about living in heads rent free. Yeah, I live in my own head rent free. I hate it. People are obsessed with living in people's heads rent free. Yeah. And yeah. they're yet they're just not even trying to get them to pay. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. I'd rather be living in somebody's head for like a cost, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, give me give me a little something. My sword is on fire, but I have retreated in cowardice. I'm sorry, everyone. Okay, how about Did something it beat the that, boss? How about something that was uh ridiculously high budget with little return, like the original Shenmu? Yeah, yeah. Although they just made Shenmue 3, so like... It's but it's of... not as rich as the first it's one. It's true. It's not Shenmue. It's not yeah, Shenmue, I mean, Shenmue. Okay, so a Shenmue-level video game in the year 2021 would be way bigger, way denser, and way more expensive to make than even Red Dead Redemption 2 for scale, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it might be like mm -hmm. Star Citizen level. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess Star Citizen is the game you can't make today, uh, because uh, isn't it still in... It's beta or whatever. Yeah, still getting made. People still like it, though, and they're still giving them a bunch of money. I don't know. Still don't even know what that game is. You can't. The game that you shoots. can't make today is just the open world game that everyone has been playing in their head since Grand Theft Auto 3. Many have attempted. All have failed to make that game. One of the toughest things, maybe something you can't make today, is, uh, is a console exclusive that feels like it's console exclusive that feels like it can only exist on that console like a wii exclusive sure like you got that waggle or whatever there's nothing else you could do it on or the or the ds or something like ratchet that. and but, clank is only a ps5 game it is designed for uh, because of the loading be, because of the loading for that and ssd and 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 because of the ray tracing it, it is designed knowing that every single user has an ssd and ray tracing and yeah, nothing true. else can do that I get fast loading times on my PC. I get good ray tracing, but no ray tracing on the uh, not everybody else does. Series S and no games. No yeah. game on the PC is taking as much advantage of those things as. Yeah, that it's game. not. It's it's never listed as a requirement on any yeah. PC game. It's not like a fast SSD required. I'm I'm actually kind of glad you can't uh, make DS games anymore uh, because they're just the two screens. It's breaking the format. I got Shin Megami Tensei three on my Steam library. Don't have Shin Megami Tensei 4. How, do they, how would they even make that? They'd have to remake it. They got a whole game just locked on a stupid 3DS. I'm yeah. glad of that. I think it's still pretty close to true, though. I mean, aside from the play date, like, you can mostly do Ratchet and Clank. I mean, the ray tracing is possible on the Xbox series. Well, you're talking about the play date. If they made it, it would be called Ratchet and Crank. So. That's right. Exactly. I was thinking about Ratchet and Trace. Oh. Could have gone that direction. I can't believe I beat the boss in Demon's Souls. I wasn't even really paying attention. Okay, you can't make a paddle game anymore. 
True. Oh, yeah. You can make a light gun game, actually. Analog twisting game, and, and that's true. Why like, don't the analog sticks rotate on controllers? Why don't they? Don't they should, right? I got a controller in my hand right now. I could, I could enjoy tweaking this this knob here. I could enjoy just rotating it left and right to do something while also manipulating it as an analog stick. I'm trying, rehearsing yeah. this action that does not exist. I think light gun Little games. midnight resistance. Yeah. yeah. Light gun games you can't make uh, because the... Uh, because nobody PCBs. paid attention when people made good ones? Well, it's because the screens, you can't do the flashing. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of like Switch games where you point stuff. I don't think there it's not the are same, switch, though. but there's no switch games where you point. No one in Japan goes on dates anymore. That's true because of the coronavirus. Yeah, yeah. They, there hasn't been a good solution. For you can make an arcade one, and they still do. Yeah, I I'll tell you what games can't get made these days: Ridge Racer. When are we going to get another one of those? Previously on Insert Credit, Tim Rogers asked, "What is the Ooh. real life equivalent of playing a Far Cry game?" <laughs> oh, that was last week. Yeah. Yeah. I like, get back uh, to so, that. is okay. So, first of all, in order to answer this question, we need to figure out what is the uh, what is the video game equivalent of playing a Far Cry game. Uh, <laughs> is it is it playing a Far Cry? <laughs> so, to me, Far Cry games are. I don't know. I I just I know people who play them who are like, oh, I got that new Far Cry, dude. It's like, what? I didn't know you a played video games. B uh, played Far Cry. Uh, I I didn't know anybody knew what Far Cry was. You know, it's like I had a buddy in Oakland who would suddenly bought a far cry game it's like dude got that far cry 3 and i'm like what like why it does seem to have a different slightly different audience somehow yeah and a specific and dedicated audience it's just like a, a slice of white bread of open world you know it's like a piece of open world toast it's a little uh it's a little grittier and the possibility space that you can imagine is wider than in assassin's creed for example yeah w whether that's true is up for debate, but I, I personally I feel, like... feel as though the verisimilitude uh, offered by, say, an Assassin's Creed, the feeling of like being in a place, I don't know, I feel like that's just far more valuable. Uh, and the Far Cries always leave me kind of cold. The food analog is the, uh, the Velveeta shells and cheese. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's just video gaming and there's just like all sorts of stuff in there. And uh, it's relatively frictionless, effortless. So what is the real life equivalent of that? traveling to somewhere that like like vegas or something it's like staying on the vegas strip oh staying um, on the strip it's not actually that interesting but it's the thing you know you're supposed to do for vacation there's always stuff to do and it's everywhere but it's all mostly the same mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> i agree with that as well because it, it's like it's a very um purposefully designed experience to kind of keep you inside of it and shepherd you around and make you feel like different things are happening i feel like it's going to vegas with like an envelope of cash that you intend to use for gambling uh that you have set aside and you're like if it runs out then i stop gambling and then you do <laughs> you and then you do and you eat it uh, you eat a steak at a buffet right it's like steak buffet lobster buffet you watch Barbara Streisand do a show or something. Yeah, you you watch a show. Yeah, once you've ground up enough experience points of uh, being hot outside and cold inside. I think you watch Boys to Men at this point, though. You're on the strip. Yeah. Barbara Streisand is, uh, so. she's animatronic now, isn't she? Like, yeah, I don't yeah know. they got her at the Hall of Presidents. <laughs> AI Barbara Streisand. Hey, who, who do they have on, on the, the strip now in Vegas? Who's, you got the Blue Man Group. You got the boys to men, the uh, Cirque du Soleil, uh, Carrot Top. I think is still doing Ooh. it. Uh, Carrot Top, yeah. Well, there you go, Carrot Top. That guy's sucks. got muscles, and he sucks. Chairman of the board. Kathy Griffith was doing a lot of stuff for a while, but I don't know. No, the 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 female Carrot Top, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think she's a little better than him. Maybe. Yeah, she's funnier than him for sure. She says the same air. She's not as strong though. <laughs> a little better than Carrot Top is still uh, absolute nonsense. Uh, I saw. I was in the 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 lobby at my uh, my primary care doctor, and they had the TV on, right? And it was like tuned to some local local New York uh, news channels. Like I don't I don't watch no local. I don't watch TV. Period. Right. I own a TV because I'm not a, I'm not a weirdo. I don't watch TV. They, the local news was on, and they were, they were interviewing the Blue Man Group for some reason. It was just like these three white dudes, and they're like, when we originally got started with Blue Man Group, we saw ourselves as transcending race. Oh, great. And now that as we as you know as the, the we get deeper into the 21st century, and then my name got called, and I was like, oh my god, what were they gonna? What <laughs> how, how, how deep how deep were they gonna dig this hole? It's like we painted ourselves blue to transcend race. I'm like, is this like literally uh, 
an ARG for like arrested development or something. Like, I don't understand how many years late this thing is. It was real weird. So I feel like that's definitely. Yeah, that's in there. Very Far cry lists, I would say. It feels, uh, it feels like it's existing in the Far Cry world. So I'm up for saying, yeah, Far Cry is a Vegas vacation. But is it a post- or pre-retirement Vegas vacation, Frank? Uh, I believe it's pre. How old are your children when you take this, this vacation? Oh, okay. So you're taking <laughs> the children with you. That's compelling. Um, yeah. How, how old? You've got to. You got it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like 30s adults without kids was, was mm-hmm. what I had. But... Uh, yeah, the kids can be there. It's kind of the same thing, right? It's not it's not necessarily debaucherous the, yeah. the Far Cry experience. It's just a a uh, a prescribed vacation. Well, I mean the the kids are an escort mission. Mm-hmm. Uh so. Yeah, the kids are, are are essential NPCs. I mean, we've all seen movies set in Las Vegas and we've all been to Las Vegas. And we know I've been that there the, a lot. Yeah, you've been there. You've been there a little bit more than than most people should, right? The the movies about Las Vegas largely misrepresent the the demographical details of the interior of a casino because you have a lot of people wearing not uh, tailored suits, right? <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, and not you know like bodybuilder cut with beautiful hair, right? It's you have a lot of people who are just like small basketball shaped children uh, drinking uh, like coke from like a giant commemorative thermos mm-hmm. dangling from a colorful mm-hmm. lanyard with like a clown on you it got a lot of aunts and grandmas just ca- literally bumping into things and each other i think we so got you it. think you know what an open world video game is go anywhere do anything uh and then it's like oh go here and do you can go all of these here's and do all of these this is is basically what a far cry game is and I just don't think they're good. I'm sorry. I've never really enjoyed one. Nailed it. I think they're all right. I don't know. It's time for one of our more ubiquitous lightning rounds. Uh, name design. All right. This is the one where I give you the name of a thing and you have to design a video game based on it just from the name alone. Uh, last time we did this, we took the titles of actual Japanese adult videos. And oh, right. I'd like to do that again. So here okay. are 10 that uh, Esper and I picked out from the past month. Your first title is KFC Part Timer Chiaki. Wow. All right. Well, it's a little, it's hard to not just say that this is like a, a branded game by KFC. Yeah. One of those, one of those like management sim kind of games, or like, I guess it would be more, it'd be more interesting to be like a uh, Octodad kind of thing where you're trying to do. Mm. You're trying to do your your KFC duties, but your limbs are all flailing around. Flailing around. Maybe Chiaki is a big squid, something like that. You're frying chicken. All eleven spices are just you know, separated now. And That's yeah, they're all, reunite you gotta them. Mix them properly. Yeah. Okay. There's nobody alive can keep track of all of those spices. Yeah, eleven. Come on. Boys be Dan. Boys be Dan. Dan. Oh, Dan. Yes. Oh. I see. So, uh, Boys Be is a popular visual novel series about, you know, going on dates with boys. Mm -hmm. And in this one, you get to date Dan Hibiki from Street Fighter. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Boys Be Dan. Boys Be Dan. I don't know. I don't know. Voluptuous laundry. (laughs) Laundry or lingerie? Laundry. Laundry. Voluptuous laundry. laundry. Well, this is clearly, uh, like dead or alive extreme beach volleyball, except, uh, you're running a laundry shop. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it I think it. I think it's the Yakuza Zero running a club mini game, but it's running a, a laundry mat where uh, voluptuous women do it uh, for you. They, they they wash the clothes for you, and you just sit on a bench. Let's new face kind of it, business. At this point in history, we would all appreciate uh, just any one of the Yakuza mini games being turned into a full, full game, triple A video game, right? They all feel like full games already. Though. It owns. A wife that believes everything she sees on TV and a husband that believes everything he reads on the internet. <laughs> wow. That's just America. Oh, man. Okay. It's, it's, it's an America simulator. <laughs> it's, it's facade. Oh, yeah, so okay. you have, you have yeah. to uh, resolve their differences. But uh, all you can do is like provide them links to like synopses. Yeah, you can show them programming. Yeah. To try to influence their, uh, them and, and reconcile their their troubled relationship. Uh, playing with shameful human cards. What? <laughs> it, well, it's a uh, it's like Catherine, 
um, the mini game in Catherine, except instead of climbing on blocks, you're climbing on cards. I don't like this. Idea. No, that's not good. Let's, let's do another one. Let's do another one. Playing with shameful human cards. Yeah, that's the name. Well, I mean, I don't know. There's a fighting game called Guilty Gear. So, I mean, you could probably just... It's nothing is off the table here when it comes to uh, fighting games. I think uh, it could be a one of those deck building games. I think there wouldn't be any cards at all. But it's too embarrassing to look at the front of the card. So you can only see it for like half a second. You flip it around, flip it back, and then you have to remember where it was and play them from behind because uh, they're too shameful. Oh, that's something, I guess. Something. Anyway. Shameful human cards. I, it would probably involve uh, uh, you You can't see your own cards until you flip them over. Right. You have one card in a, in a card hold slot and a whole slot, and then once you flip it, the other player can see it as well. 30 years, 40 years, even 50 years old. Episode 7. <laughs> Oh, nice. Man. Uh, this is about this is a game about uh, it's another management game, but it's about tortoises. No, it's really? a vanillaware game that's set in three three different timelines. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. It's with an involving time travel, like one character, and they're at age 30, 40, and fifty. Uh, you can, uh, sort of send things across across the uh, the Rubicon board. I don't know. Bye. And then they manage turtles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's tie it all in. Uh, do you have any information about this housewife? <laughs> well, it's a, it's a detective four. game. Yeah. It's Shenmue 4. Oh, it's Shenmue 4. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what, finally, in Shenmue 4, uh, Ryo is uh, he's finally finally about to solve the case. So he's getting there. He's about to. Finally yeah. about he's to. He's on the cusp. Finally. Only needs yeah. two more. My housewife has the info. My man's going to solve the case. No way, no way, gal, gal, gal. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, this is a rhythm game, I think. It's, it's like rhythm. Yeah, it's got to be. I yeah. was thinking it could be uh, like a rhythmic y choo choo rocket where you have to direct all the gals around, um, mm-hmm. little choo-choo. blockades, and try to try to get them where they're supposed to go, and then they hit things on the beat. In my day, we had choo choo trains. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> Am I right? No. You are right. Our next game is Slurp Four Hours Two. Oh, it's a beverage drinking. Video. I don't like this one. <laughs> no, this is Brandon's worst it's a beverage nightmare. drinking. Yes, when you drink big old big beverages, big old beverages, bob. Do you slurp anything but a slurpee though? I slurp a slurpee. I don't. Care. You can slurp a soup. Yeah, but do you slurp other things? Is the question. Uh, people people do that with noodles in Japan. Mm, that's true. Yeah, or like uh, if if you. Uh, I believe the term is cupping. If you're uh, if you're taste testing coffees, yes, that's a slurp. That's <laughs> that a big slurp. Yes. Oh, you don't want to hear this ever. By the way, yeah, no, yeah, this would ruin your day. I've met a person. This was terrifying. I've met a person who uh, slurped just everything. They were slurping a burrito. Wow. Ah. All right. I hated it. It's a dead heat. This is our last one. Uh, whoever gets this wins the episode. Your last game is Magnum Grandfather. Whoa! <laughs> I mean, it's just a hardcore out Foxy's action game starring a grandfather, in my opinion. No, I think it's a it's it's, it's a Cho Aniki successor. Get the Cho Aniki license on there. Yeah, it's Magnum PI's uh, grandson. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't it be Magnum PI's grandfather? No, he has it to would. kill his grandfather. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, he has. You have to kill Magnum PI. Ah. Uh, uh, and you're as you're. Yeah, there you go. You know what? I'm gonna go kill him. I'm gonna say you're all winners this week. Uh, because next week we're doing a special episode. Whoa. What? It's been a while since we did a ranker. People have been asking me to do a ranking episode. And uh, I think now that we've got the whole gang back together, it's time for the long-awaited console ranker. Nice. We are going to do a draft-style pick, uh, determine what the 20 best video game consoles are. I would like to define a console as anything that is capable of playing a video game. But we'll probably nail that down harder uh, when we get there. So tune in next week. It's a special holiday treat. A holiday uh, treat. This is also a time for people to make recommendations. And I offer you that opportunity now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got some stuff. Are you talking about last minute gift ideas? Uh, if you want, you can do that. I'm going to recommend two things. One is I'm going to recommend uh, the show. This is just if you're interested in watching how to not do something. Check out School of Chocolate on Netflix. It really will make you appreciate how other reality TV shows do what they do and why there's there's such a formula to reality TV shows because this one, just like it kind of starts, you don't really know what the point is or what anyone's supposed to do. 
Uh, you don't know who any of the people participating are. I, we're on episode three now, and there are two assistants to the head chef that uh, have still never been talked about or discussed. I assume they're assistants. There's people who show up and sh- say something sometimes. It's really remarkable the way this uh, this show chooses to ignore all conventions of reality TV construction and uh, create something that's very confusing to watch. Give that a look if you want to marvel at how something like, I don't know, The Bachelor does a good job of letting you know exactly what's going on at all times and who is talking and why they're saying it. I can't watch that The Bachelor. I can't watch any of those reality shows. Something about the texture of them just uh, oh yeah uh, rips my brain off. It's designed to be not for you, I think. It but, brains um, me off. The other thing I would like to recommend is uh, as of a couple hours from now, we will have announced Hyper Gunsport, which is the newest and ultimatest vision of Gunsport, which is the game that we've been working on for a little while. And we actually started thinking about this game, or the first prototype of it happened in 2013. God darn it. That's a very long time ago. Almost as long as this podcast. So now you can uh, now you can actually like wish list it on Steam. We would appreciate it if you did that, because apparently, apparently that's still really important. And Steam actually cares. If you have a bunch of wish lists in the first week, so even if you don't want to buy the game, just go do it. Just look up Hyper Gunsport on Steam and oh, wish list. I love the thing. wish lists. Yeah, go and do it. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. Check out our trailer. Go to necrosoftgames.com. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, that website or Twitter.com/slash/necrosoftgames. Get our info. I don't know. Just get in there. Yeah. Help us out with that a little bit, because uh, I don't know. We'd like to make a couple dollars off it if we could. I got a Costco card. It's pretty cool. Having a Costco card's good. Yeah, sixty bucks a year. Oh, you haven't? You never had a Costco card? Uh, I hadn't had one in about a decade. Oh. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm back on the Costco. I haven't used mine in a while. I tried to go to Costco with Tim a bunch of times, and the problem that I found was I could not purchase things in small enough quantities that I could use them before they would go bad. Oh. So what I'm doing is purchasing things in very large quantities that uh, become that frozen. Don't go bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, or are non-perishable. So but, I got a giant then, sack of dried figs. They're great. You just got stockpiling some... it in your house because I mean, then you only yeah. go like once every two months, and is it w- worth it at that point? Uh, yes, it is. I know you're not a meat eater, but the the best example I can give you here is the meat, which is that uh, chicken is about. Two dollars and thirty cents a pound versus about six dollars a pound in the grocery store. How many pounds of meat does a person eat? Uh, I don't know. I could eat a pound a pound a day, maybe. The average American know. eats six hundred pounds of meat per year. Yeah, there you go. Which is like a lot more than you'd think. And I, yeah. I probably That's eat not more true. than I probably eat more than that because I, I'm, I'm swole with the weightlifting and all. Yeah. Have you been lifting, Frank? Three years. Oh, that's good. Congratulations. Yeah, swole. I've been. Uh, just relentlessly ill with the condition I don't feel comfortable speaking about publicly. So I've, I've fallen off <laughs> for the last three years. So I've fallen off of the, uh, the, the exercise wagon, 100%. I'm just all the way on the floor under the wagon right now. The wagon refuses to move for me. So. You've infected the wagon <laughs> with, your, with your, your laziness. With, with, my, with my lethargy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I just died in Demon Souls. I didn't think I was going to die for like a long time. I thought I was just going to live, and then I just, I scrubbed it up. Is that your recommendation? No. Oh. I'm just saying, it makes me feel sad. And then I died again and again on the same guy because I was trying to beat him the same stupid way. It would have looked interesting in video footage if it had succeeded. However, it failed, and then uh, I just didn't bother putting my heart in it to do it again. So I feel like a chump and, and a loser. So my recommendation for this week is, uh, I don't know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie to you, I didn't really do anything this week. So that's really all. I just I didn't really do anything. Would you I, I mean, I did work. Souls? No, I've recommended Demon Souls plenty before. Right. I'm I'm working my way out of Demon Souls, and uh, it's just my my go to leisure game because I'm on this PlayStation Five. You know what I recommend? I recommend uh, just don't even try getting a PlayStation Five <laughs> for the for the Christmas <laughs> season. It has what like three games. I mean, come on, I'm gonna tell you something real sad. Okay, is my PlayStation Five controller battery died? While I was playing the game, while it was plugged into the console and charging, it died. Okay. It shouldn't be possible. They got force feedback triggers, right? They got a touch screen, a touch pad, the world's biggest select button. They've got a controller speaker. They got a headphone jack, a microphone jack, a light bar, buttons, vibration motors, 
it's 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 both sending and receiving information from the console at all times too much stuff packed over one little tiny pencil thin hair angel hair bluetooth channel the controller cannot charge and play the game at the same time well it can it was on a full charge and it uh it exhausted its full charge while plugged into the console that shouldn't be possible right that, yeah that seems you wrong. can't you can't binge game a video game even if it's part of your job anymore without stopping to charge the controller i mean i will say i was playing the game like 14 straight hours though you know i mean come on so if, if 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 your child is begging you for a PlayStation 5 for Christmas and you get on eBay and you want to scalp it, don't do it. Get your child a mister. Okay. <laughs> and tell your child this these are the good games, Jerry. Metroid Dread on the Nintendo Switch. You're gonna be super missling a door 90% of the way through the game. Come on. Uh, I will, during our Game of the Year show, explain that uh, Fist was a better Metroid. Fist! Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Here are my recommendations. Uh, they may be familiar to you if you've heard this show before. I would like to recommend that if you're listening to this show on any platform where you can subscribe to or review podcasts, that you do that. Seriously, do that. Don't not do it. Do actually do it. Uh, you can also go to patreon.com slash insert credit where you could become a patron to submit your own topics and uh, get monthly bonus episodes and other surprises available only to our donors. You could also join us on forums.insertcredit.com and follow us on Twitter for our own personal updates and projects. Uh, though I would personally recommend just not using Twitter. But as long as you're there, uh, the show is at Insert Credit. I'm at Alex Jaffe. Frank is at Frank Cifaldi. Tim is at 108. Brandon is at Necrosofty. The show is edited by Esper Quinn <laughs> with music by Kurt Feldman. And I'm Alex Jaffe. And I'm Frank Cifaldi. I'm Tim Rogers. And I'm Brandon Schiff. And you have now saved your game. And I'm Jerry Trashcan. Wait, who was that? Who's Jerry Trashcan? Uh, should I say, and you have now saved your game, or should I say, and your game is now saved? I think, and your game is now saved because they didn't do it. Yeah, I think that's better. I think I'll switch to that. I mean, maybe they saved their game by listening to the yeah, show. Yeah, that's what I was trying question. to imply, but I don't know. I, I It's kind of a passive act listening to the show. It's like we're taking care of you. Your game is now saved. Yeah, eradicating passive voice from all pros in the universe is a mission of some people. It's autosave in this. Yeah. It's like you've reached this checkpoint. Podcast. Yeah. Checkpoint reached. Checkpoint reached. Oh, I remember that from the original Halo. Hello.